Anytime we can come together and to be in the house of the Lord is a tremendous blessing, tremendous opportunity that we have to worship the Lord. Amen. And certainly he's been so good to us. And again, he has loved us so many, many, so many times he has blessed us and loved us in such a great way, amen, that we can never repay them all. Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings in the fourth chapter. We're going to talk about a widow this morning. And, uh, widow's miracle. Simple and titled, The Widow's Miracle Debt Cancellation. The Widow's Miracle Debt Cancellation. That's what she had. She had a debt that she could not pay. Amen. Debt that she could not pay. Second Kings 4, beginning in the first verse, says, Now the cloud is certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah. This is one of the sons of the prophet that was working under Elijah. And he had passed on and now she was a widow. Saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord and the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be bonded. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And then she said, Thy handmaid hath had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. When thou art coming in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, he said, Go, Sell the oil and pay the debt and live thou and thy children off of the rest. Amen. Of the rest. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. God, we bless you for the reading of your word. Now we pray, Lord, Father, this morning that this message, Lord, would touch somebody's heart and life, Lord. God, that you would anoint this vessel to preach this morning. i help you today. And I stand alone and be effective. I need you. Lord, I know that you've never failed me. God, I trust you again this morning. God, to help me today. Lord, trust the ears of the hearing, the heart to receive. God, I know that your word is powerful. God, let us hear from you this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. The widow's miracle, death, cancellation. The widow's miracle death cancellation. She was in a dilemma. She called the man of God. His name being Elisha. And she told Elijah, she said, I don't have anything. I don't have money to pay this debt. You know that my husband served under you in school, probably, but he's dead, and I have no money. I have no way they're going to come and get my two sons. And what they're going to do with my two sons, they're going to be a bondman. They're going to labor for this individual for at least seven years. Back then, seven years, you could sort of get restitution. Every 50 year, a man of year in Jubilee, 
Praise the Lord. We can get all debts canceled and land returned back to its family. Praise the Lord. How many know, amen, the year of Jubilee represents what Christ did for us? Amen. When we think of Jubilee, and we think of cancellation, that's what the Lord did for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, here she was without a husband, had evidently recently been widowed at some point, and no doubt she was about to lose the other two people that were closest to her. Her two sons. They were going to be taking a man to serve to pay back the debt. And so she called the man of God and she pleaded with him, What can I do? What am I going to do? How can I not see this happen? What, what are we going to do? Man of God said, I want you to do something. I want you to understand the first thing here. She had, he was a servant, her husband, of Elijah. Second thing, he feared the Lord. You know, it would do good for us today if we would learn how to serve. It would do for us good to serve the Lord. Amen. What about if they choose you this day whom you will serve? Will you serve God? I'd ask you this morning, are you serving God? Are you doing something for God? Are you serving for Him? Not necessarily me or the church, but are you serving for God? Are you doing it for the Lord? Are you doing it unto the Lord? How many know everything we do, we got to do it unto the Lord? Well, this man, though, he was a servant, man. The Bible said that he feared the Lord. Amen. He had a sense of respect and reverence for the Lord. And I believe no doubt his service, though it was to help Elijah, his service in doing the work of the Lord. Amen. With the prophets was a service unto the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, there's two ways you can serve in the church. You can serve the church to be serving the church, and you can serve the Lord, and in doing so, you can serve the church. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Some folks serve, amen, or do things uh, out of obligation. But we need to do it because we love the Lord. Amen. amen. Then if you do it that way, how many know you minister to the Lord? Amen. You've been a blessing to the body of Christ. And you're doing it for the right reasons. Praise God. So he was a servant, amen. He was one that feared God. Praise the Lord. You know, today I wonder how many people really fear God. I wonder how much of America fears God today. I seen just, I'm trying to remember what state it was, just yesterday, one state, or sometime this last few days, one state, amen, approved another long-term abortion bill. I forget which state it was, but late-term abortion. And I tell you, man, I wonder where the fear of God is at today. I wonder where it's gone today. I wonder where the fear of God is in our pulpits today when men and women do not preach the word of God. I wonder where the reverence for God has gone. And where is the fear of the Lord? Praise the Lord. But we need to fear Him. We need to reverence Him. We need to honor Him. Praise God. But you know, she had a problem. This woman had a dire state problem and a real need. She had a situation that she could not get herself out of. She had a debt that she could not pay. She didn't have any means to pay it off. She didn't have any money to get to pay her debt down. She did not have the resources. See, she had like us a problem today. She had a debt that she could not pay. Can I tell you, I want to look at this this morning and tell you this morning that we had a debt that we could not pay. We had not the means, nor was we considered worthy to pay the debt. Amen. We owe the debt because we trespassed against God. What writer said it's a wage, for the wages of sin is death in Romans 
Amen. Six. For the way of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life Amen. through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 3.23 tells for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There has to be a payment for our death. Amen. There has to be a payment for our death. In order for her to get released, in order for her son to be free, and I had to work for this individual, the debt had to be paid in full. Amen. The debt had to be paid in full. So today, I want you to know, today, amen, that we had a debt that we could not pay. We ought to be ever thankful for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He paid a debt that he did not owe. Hallelujah. A debt that I could not cover. Praise God. No amount of good living, no amount of what my mother did could ever pay that debt. Hallelujah. I owe my allegiance to him, for it was a debt that I could not pay. Amen. He made the provision. Praise the Lord. One writer said this, Matthew 6 and 12, Jesus called it the debt. He said, Jesus treated him like a debt. He said this, and forgive us our debts if we forgive our debtors in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debt. What debt? The debt of sin. The debt of wickedness in our heart and Amen. When we transgressed against God, every man, boy, girl, born into with a sinful nature ever since Adam. Colossians, the writer of Colossians says, and you been dead in your sins and the earth circumcised circumcision of your flesh, having quickened together with him, have forgiven you all trespasses. Now, the word trespass most of us know what that means. That means that you're in violation of something. Praise the Lord. If, if it says, uh, amen, on a property, if it says no trespassing, you have no legal right to go on that individual's property unless you have had permission uh, to go on their property. Why? Because that would be violating the individual's right to privacy and to own his own property. Come on, somebody. And that's what God is saying here. When we violate his word, we are sinning or we are trespassing against the law of God. And therefore, of the law, there was no way that we could be saved. There was no way that we could provide a sacrifice good enough there was no way that we could ever, amen, do enough uh, to forgive us of our trespasses or our sins. Amen. And this was the situation. The woman had a debt that she couldn't pay. Praise the Lord. He goes on to Colossians 2 and 13. Right after that verse, he says, after you forgive trespasses, because you've been forgiven, blot out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. What handwriting? The Word of God. The ordinances of God. The law of God. The truth of God's Word. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Why is it contrary to us? Because we're in the flesh. We were not saved. We were uncircumcised. We were not born again. The Word of God is contrary to the natural man. The Word of God is contrary. The reason there's so much conflict uh, between the world and the church because the word, word of God is contrary to what the flesh wants to do. Amen. So he said, contrary to us and took it out of the way. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. He took it out of the way. I trespassed it. He removed it out of the way. What did he do? The scripture says, and nailed it to the cross. Somebody ought to shout. He said, contrary to he took it out of the way. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Nailed it to the cross. Praise the Lord. So she had a debt she could not pay. Amen. We trespassed against God. We've got a debt we could not pay. Don't let yourself be fooled that you was ever good enough, that you've ever been righteous enough to do what Christ did at Calvary to satisfy our death. Because you have never did anything, hallelujah, that would ever make you worthy to stand in the presence of God apart from Jesus Christ. This 
woman was hopeless. Amen. She was without hope. She could do nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. About her situation on her own. But she called the man of God. And I tell you, not only do we have a debt because we trespassed against God, but also our good works never satisfy the debt. Our good works will never satisfy the debt. No matter what we do, how we live, the righteousness that we consider our own will never satisfy the debt that is charged to our account. Amen. Think about it. It is charged so I can't we never can satisfy that debt by works. Only the finished work of Christ. Only what Christ did. Nailed it to the cross. Only that debt that he paid for us. A debt he did not owe, but he loved us. Isaiah 64 and 3 through 6 tells us what condition we was in. It says, For thou didst terrible things, which we looked not for, thou camest down. The mountains flow down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, world, men have not heard nor perceived the ear. Neither I have seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those, those that remember thee in the ways, behold thou art wrong for. We have sinned. In those his countenance we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness is our, our filthy rags. And we do it fade as a leaf. And our iniquity is like the wind and it has taken us away. Think about what he's saying here. And there is no one that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. But thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, thou art Father, and we are the clay. Thou art the potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. Be not very so, O oh Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee. We are all thy people. So he tells us the condition of man. He tells us, amen, that our life is a filthy right. He tells us an unclean thing. That our life fades away as a leaf, amen. That our life is fading away. Our life is frail, amen. It for a short time is in the vapor. It's here that it's gone. It tells the condition of mankind. It tells the state of mankind. He said, Lord, none stir himself up to take hold of me. And I tell you, I didn't stir my own self up to take hold to serve God. It took the Spirit of God to knock on my heart's door and to call me. There was nothing, amen, in myself that stirred me up to serve God. And when I got saved, it took the Lord's power to gloriously draw me to a place called Calvary. And He paid Amen. 
Hallelujah. John said it like this. Behold the Lamb of God. I said he's the Lamb. The mighty Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, pray God. There's nothing that will take your sins away. There is nothing that will cancel your debt. There is nothing that they have today. Amen. There's no way possible that you can get close to God and in the presence of God if it's not for Jesus Christ. If it's not for Him that cancels our death. And it not been for the blood that ran down the place of the skull of God to see you. Oh, that death cost Him. It cost Him his very life. But it's through that death payment that now my death has been canceled. And I can shout Jubilee for my soul is free. And my heart is right and fixed on God. And I thank the Lord for it. Somebody say amen. Oh, hallelujah. We were created to worship Him. We were created to praise Him. But man was born. But there was one who was born more than any man on this earth. And that was Jesus Christ. And when He came into our life, it restored what had been broken. It restored that broken fellowship. When He now sees the blood, way, but he sees a new creature. He sees a sanctified and holy vessel. One that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Death cancellation. I don't know the dead anymore. It's been paid. Amen. It's been canceled. When I stand before God, Jesus amen, has canceled our dead. Third thing I want you to notice about this situation our debt of sin keeps us bound. This woman was bound. There was a heaviness there. As long as she had this debt. There was a heaviness there as long as she had this debt. Can I tell you, she was waiting out on this problem. The more she tried, the more she wanted to try to do something about it, the more she got. Can I tell you, the more try, people try to live life without place without surrendering to Him, without putting Him first, the more messed up we get, the more bound we become, the more the way we come from God. And I tell you, man, our sin, amen, our sin binds us, amen. Hallelujah. It calls us to be in captive, in slavery to the enemy. Before we are saved, amen, we're not, listen, before we're saved, amen, we're kept in slavery to the enemy. We're a servant of him. Amen. We're strained from God. Hallelujah. It binds us. We're not free. The flesh, again, rules our life. The flesh, again, we pattern ourselves after the ways of the flesh. We are bound. Amen. Though sometimes, even, even in that time before we're saved, there's things that we do that we don't even want to do. But because the flesh is greater than we can handle, amen, the flesh is greater than we can even deal with. Amen. Because it's a carnal nature. Amen. Humans got to have what that carnal nature desires. We do a lot of time things that we don't even want. We want to escape from. That we want to get out of. No telling how many times. Amen. A person has drunk that alcohol. No matter how many times a person has cussed and said, I don't want to do that anymore. Amen. But they won't give their heart to the Lord. They won't surrender to Him. They're fed up with the way they are. But they, amen. They, they seem like it's a hopeless situation. And I tell you, man, it'll keep you bound. I'll tell you something else. After you've been born again, you've been set free. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to the world for psychopath. Don't go back to the things you went come and brought out of. Because it will once again bind you. It will once again enslave you. But let's stay free in the name of Jesus. And keep our faith and trust in Him. And if we sin and when we sin, let's confess before Him our sin. Who is faithful and just to forgive us? Then to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Next thing, until the sin debt is paid, there is no way to approach God. Until the debt of sin is paid, there is no way to approach God. To stand in front of a holy God and be blessed of Him. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, which no man shall see the Lord. Now, how are we going to be holy if all everything about us, Christ said, 
the word of God says that is unholy. Our righteousness is filled with rags because it is Him that has made us holy. It is His blood that has made us worthy. It is His grace that has, has parted us. It is His mercy that we didn't get what we deserved. Oh, I'm glad He loved us today. Amen. This woman could not approach that, that man. Amen. Because the debt had not been paid. It had not been it had not been solved. It had not been made done away with. It had not been, amen. Hallelujah. The debt had not been taken care of yet. And I'm glad today that we can approach God today. I'm glad today that we can live in the presence and the power of God. I'm glad that even though he is a holy God and he needs to be respected and honored and reverenced, I'm glad today that we can enter in into the presence of Almighty God and be blessed of him because it's not me that makes me worthy. It is the blood of Jesus and Jesus. Because I will fail, but if I'll keep my eyes upon him and look to the cross of Calvary, the finished work of Jesus, I can make it through him, and I can stay whole through him and pure through him. Hallelujah. He is our strength and source of salvation today. Yes, Moving on. He said, I want you to go get a vessel. I want you to know something. God provided a solution for the death. He said, you got a vessel, don't you? You got a vessel, go get it. And I want you to take that vessel of oil. I want you to go out and I want you to find some more vessels. I want you to bring them back. He said, I want you to get not just a few, but get a lot of them. Amen? Get a lot of them. Because you're going to need them. And she went out, and her sons, they went out and they got all these vessels, and they brought it back. They began to fill them with oil. They kept pouring, they kept pouring, they kept pouring. Then they ran out of vessels, but there was still oil left. Amen? There was still oil left. Can I tell you something this morning? She had a vessel. Can I tell you something? God had a plan. God had a vessel with his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? The Bible says in Psalm 133 and 4, If thou, Lord, should have mark iniquity, should have mark iniquity, O Lord, who sustain but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. He is the one that gives us forgiveness. Amen. God had a plan. God had a best with me. God had a sacrifice. I'm so thankful today. He said, if Lord, thou shouldest mark the difference. In other words, Lord, if thou should keep a list of do's and uh, of wrongs in of my life. Uh, if thou should just constantly mark them down uh, and make no way for them to be canceled or, rest, or, or, or erased, if, I, if there is no way for me to ever deal with the sin in my life, uh, Lord, I'll die, die, die of sinner, Lord. Lord, I'll die of miserable man. I'll die of miserable woman because I cannot uh, make a way, man. But God provided the vessel, man. He said that there is forgiveness in, with thee that thou mayest be feared. He said in Psalm, amen, it goes on and, and tells us, amen, in Romans 3, 24 through 26, being justified freely by his grace uh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen, redemption literally means to buy back, uh, to buy back from destruction, uh, to buy back uh, to its original state, uh, to restore back. Uh, I'm telling you, not only does he save, uh, but he restores back the individual completely whole before Almighty God. The way when he stands before God, there is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He had been what? By his great redemption in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth uh, to be a propitiation. That word propitiation literally means uh, he took our place. On Calvary's hill, he took our place. He stood in place. Uh, it may be between God and earth, between me and you. Uh, Jesus, the mighty mediator, uh, took our place. Uh, hallelujah. Through faith in his blood. Uh, Oh, to declare his righteous for the remission of sins uh, that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just. Uh, and to justify, who to justify? Jesus, of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. Jesus, amen, uh, justifies us. Uh, what does justify mean? Just as if you never sinned. Just as if you've never committed any wrong. Uh, we are made right. He, God, provided a vessel. Amen. The woman she filled the vessels. 
They began to be full. Then the Bible said she was able to sell what she had and to live off the rest of it. She sold what she had, she paid the debt, and then she was able to live off the rest of it. How many know God will pay the debt and give you what you need to live to? Amen. 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 For him. I'm glad, amen, he don't just forgive us, but he gives us the power. Hallelujah. He gives us the resources. He gives us the availability to live for him. He don't just leave us after he saved us, but he's still working on us. He puts us on the pot of wheel, makes us what we need to be. And he, listen, not only that, he's so good that in Acts 1 and 8, he said, I'll send power. He said, if I go away, the comforter will not come. See, he don't just save us and capture our debt, that's it. No, he fills us with things that are good and for our life. Amen. He gives us the earnest of his spirit, the Holy Ghost of God. God said, look, and they, listen. God saved the man. Praise the Lord. He had a message. He paid a debt for the sinner. Amen. He paid a debt he did not owe. Amen. He paid the entire debt. Praise the Lord. God saved the sanctified. He sanctified us holy. Amen. He breaks the power. Amen. Of sin in our life and cancels the debt. Amen. God has forgiven you. Therefore, forgive others. Amen. What we need to learn from this is uh, that God has forgiven us. Therefore, we need to forgive others. I wanted to bring this in because Jesus said, forgiving debt is forgiven. Now, you've had a debt cancellation in your life if you are saved. Your sins have been cleansed. Amen. It's been put into the sea of forgiveness. Somebody ought to praise God. Amen. That you're not. Amen. That sin in your life. For Christ has shed. Amen. His blood for you and forgiven you. Praise the Lord. Wash your sins away. He said, for if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not me and their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I'm going to make a statement and please don't. No stone back for this. No one will ever enter into heaven who cannot forgive. No one will ever enter into heaven who cannot forgive. Mark it down. Write it down. Know what I told you. What Jesus is saying here, he said, we'll go back, for well, if you forgive me in their trespass or their sin, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not, that's not hard language. King James is not hard language. We know what not means. Men, their trespasses, neither, or neither there, will not, Cannot, and they will. Neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What does that tell us? If we do not forgive others, and Christ has been so good to us, and He's loved us so much, and He paid a debt that we could not pay, if we do not learn how to forgive others, how in the world are we ever going to make it? Forgiveness, when we know that we've been forgiven, amen. Listen. People who do not forgive fool themselves about their own forgiveness. People who do not forgive, but if they walk in life, here's the life, they have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we cast our sins, he is faithful and just to give our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. None of us can say that we always did what was right. None of us can say that we've always lived a perfect life. None of us can say that we've never had any sin in our life. Jesus said you've been forgiven of the death. If you say that you've never sinned, you deceive yourself. Can I tell you, if you realize the depth of forgiveness that Christ gave you, do you realize what he did that you might be saved? Forgiveness generates compassion, amen. Jesus, amen, in a parable told this, Matthew 18, 24, and 25, this is very self-explanatory. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 now. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children all he had and paid it be made. The servant therefore fell down and worship said, Lord, have patience with me, and I'll pay the all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of the debt. Ten thousand times 
He said, I want you. Everybody be sold. The children, everything. Be sold and pay the debt. The man fell back. said, please, I don't have it. Please, I don't have it. You know what? I'm glad I fell down one day and said, Lord, I don't got it all together. God, I, I just don't. Lord, I, I need you. God, if you have mercy on me, you're tender and save me. You know what he did? He forgave me. He didn't ask me what was on my account. He didn't ask me how bad I'd been. He didn't ask me, man, well, if you did this or you did that, if you lied this many times, or you cheated it. No! He seen my heart. He seen you was broken in there. He seen I need a Savior. And he counseled every bit of it. Yeah. Washed it all away. But I want you to look after this servant had been forgiven. After everything had been counseled. After everything he had owned had been done away with. The very next two verses, this is what he did in Matthew 18, 26, 27. I'm sorry, 28 and 30, I'm sorry. The dead have failed. This is what he said. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him 100 pence. In the day's turn, that big couple of pennies. Not very much. 100 pence. He laid on his hand on him and took him by the throat. That's bad. Said, pay me the thou us. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet. Sounds familiar, don't it? And besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And he would not, but cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Listen, how many times have you looked and said, You know what? I don't believe God can forgive that. I don't believe God can save that. How many times have we hold a grudge? How many times have we walk around with unforgiveness? How many times are we quick to condemn? Because we've been saved, so we've been saved so long that we think we've arrived. We think that we've arrived, amen. We fail to remember where God brought us from. We fail to remember the sin and the ditch that we were in. We fail to remember in the very clay that He pulled us out of. We fail to remember that we've been in the pit with the pigs. We fail to remember that that we walk with the goats. about forgiveness in your life, you will find that forgiven people naturally forgive. Am I right? We were to connect the dots and say, what should I do with forgiveness? You've been forgiven instead of to others. Forgiven people naturally forgive. This woman had a debt cancellation. This servant had a debt cancellation. Now, I don't read anywhere where the woman didn't forgive, but this servant in Matthew, maybe it would not forgive. This servant in Matthew came over to the torment of the to the pay the debt. Look what Jesus said, though, right after that. Shouldst, thou, shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? Even as I had pity on thee, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the torment, that he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother that trespasses. He said, What I can do, I'm going to do it unto you. 
How many know we reap what we sow? We reap what we sow. Maybe some of the things you're reaping is not what you want to reap. You may need to look back at your life and ask yourself, could it be some of the same things that I'm sowing in my own life? We must be quick to forgive, amen. And not hold grudges. For Christ has forgiven us. Coming to an end. Just about five, seven minutes. Lastly, God fills the vessel. Guess what? You know what he does? Before we were saved, there's what I like to call a void in our life. It just was almost like a lock without a key. You know there's another room, but you can't get in there. You can't enter in because you don't have access. You don't have the key to enter into that room. I like to call it a void in our life. A place where we're running. At a time, I really didn't know what it was. I just knew there was something missing. Why? Because we were created to worship God. We created after his end and his life. We created to serve him. I just didn't know how to get my hand up. I knew there was something in my life that I knew that I wasn't satisfied. You know what the void would do? Many times, for a while, it would drive us away from God. It would drive us to all sorts of means, all avenues. Whether it be relationships, whether it be addictions, whether it be positions, power, authority, whether it be pride, whatever it may be, to try to make our lives feel, feel, be, be fulfilled and, and feel like that we are successful, that everything in our life is, is, is just blossom. Everything in our life is satisfying. But can I tell you, we can run after everything we want to. We can make all the money that we can make. We can have all the friends that we perceive us having. We can have homes. We can have lands. We can, listen, all of these things that we can ever attain, attain on this earth. But nothing will satisfy the Lord in your life. There is always something missing when you don't have Jesus. Uh, there is nothing, listen, no drug, no money, no relationship, no, no position, uh, no power, no pride. Amen. No, 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 none of this. Nothing can satisfy. Not a house, not a car. It must have Nothing that will ever take the place of the Lord of Jesus in our life. You can run. You can try everything else. But it just will never satisfy. If you're not satisfied today, if you cannot get a sense of satisfaction in your life, if it seems like you're always doing something more, amen, you need Jesus more in your life. Amen. He satisfies. He filled the void. August 25th, 2007. Astronomers stumbled upon a tremendous hole that they called the black hole in outer space. In the universe, they began to scratch their heads about what's just not there. The cosmic black hole they found had no stray stars, no galaxies, nothing. It is said to be one billion light years across as far as they could measure, nothing. It is fast to six billion trillion miles of emptiness. This comes from the University of Minnesota astronomers. Think about that. Think of that vast black hole. Six billion trillion miles of emptiness. No stars, no galaxies, nothing. And they said, and this is what the statement they made, they found a void in the universe that's far bigger than any void that could ever be imagined. And I tell you, I found a void that's bigger than that. And that's the life without Christ. That's the life without Jesus. That's a vessel that is broken. That's a vessel that you see maybe at your job with tears running down your face. Listen, Christians can cry too. But there's so many that are not even saved. Tears running back. Sometimes they don't even cry no tears, but you can see in their eyes, you can see the pain through their anger, through their... They're not wanting to be around people. They're trying to get attention, whatever it may be. But you can see the hurt in their eyes. You can see that they said that people don't, that maybe they think that people do not love them, that nobody cared for them. You can see that they're in their mundane of going to work and going home and paying bills and just living from day to day. But you can tell that the spirit that they're, they're a bankrupt. Amen. As, a, as, as somebody, amen, like a tomb whitewashed in their heart, they're full of dead man bones. You can they're hurting, they're broken, they're reaching out, they're crying out. How to find the answer? 
That's why we need to ever be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and our witnesses. You can see they have no purpose, no being, no happiness, no reason for living. They're in search of real life. They're in search of real accomplishments and goals and success. But yet, though they get every, though they get promotions, though they get raises, though their family, they may have children, they get a new house, they still come to work. You still see them every day. Their eyes still hurt, and you can look into the soul of them. Amen. Though they look like the modern day pool of question, even in this world, they are hurting all over. Our young people are hurting today. They're reaching out for something that's genuine and real. They're longing for some relationship with Jesus. Amen. They cannot be found in anything else. The reason all of these emotions come to the spiritual void in their life. There's an empty place in their heart. It's but deep in their soul. It cannot be found just on the surface. But speaking with them just for a little bit of time and getting to know them and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can see that there are many out there today. Though we've been everything on the outside looks good, they are full of dead man bones and they are miserable, amen, and yet they may not tell it. Think about it. This is a void that religion cannot fill. Religion cannot fill it. Church attendance cannot fill it. Ruins and clubs. Different clubs for ladies and men that we get involved in. Afternoon coffee sessions. Amen. None of that can fill the void. They have an empty place within their souls. There's only one way to get meaning, true meaning out of life. And that is to have Christ in our life. He is the mission. Tell them, amen. Only Christ can fill the human heart, the void, the vacuum of our heart into our soul. Only Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Can fill our innermost being to where we completely satisfy. Only Christ. Sir. Lastly, I'm going to close with this. Christ can fill your void. This woman had a death capsulation. Christ, if we just stay in. She gave her life. This is an illustration of the story. Back in the California gold rush, this woman gave her life for her son. The California gold rush broke out. Man went to California, leaving his new wife. He lived in New England with his boy, left to go to California. As soon as he got on, he, he was su successful and he was to sin for them as soon as he got gold. It was a long time before he succeeded. But at last he got enough money to sin for them. The wife's heart leaped for joy. She took her boy to New York. They got on board a Pacific steamer and they sailed away to San Francisco, California. They had not been long at sea when all of a sudden a cry came out through the boat. Fire, fire, rain to the ship. It rapidly gained on them spreading. There was powder magazine on board. The captain knew the moment that the fire reached the powder. Every man, woman, and child must perish. What were they talking about? Gunpowder. We know what happens when fire meets that. They got out of lifeboats, but they were too small. In a minute, they were overcrowded. The lifeboats could not contain the crowd. The last one was just pushing away. When all of a sudden the mother pleaded with them to take her and her boy. They said, no, we've got as many as we can hold. She entreated them again so earnestly and said, please, please take us. They said we would not take, but only one more. Just then, you would think maybe she'd leap in the boat to save her own life. But at that point, she reached over and she gave her son one last hug and one last kiss. She dropped him over into the boat and she said, My boy, if you live to see your father, tell him I die in your place. What am I saying this morning? What am I saying that's what God did for us? That's what Christ did for us. 
when he went back to his father, and when he sees the owner of saved, it rings out in his ears, my son died for them. She's not the fish that gave her life for her child. And I tell you, that's what Jesus did for us to cost him his life. He paid a debt he could not pay. He paid a debt he could not pay. Has your debt been canceled this morning? Has your sin been washed away? Are you under the blood of Jesus? I think since Joyce, I believe she sings a song, he paid a debt that did not pay. I don't know the name of it. But one this morning, you said, Preacher, I'm not saved. I really don't know Jesus. I really don't grasp forgiveness because I'm not saved. Can I tell you, no matter where you're at this morning, no matter what you've done, no matter how far you seem like you've gone, God loves you this morning. And God said this morning, if you'll come to this altar, as I draw you in, I'm dealing with your heart. You'll come to this altar. And you'll admit that you're a sinner and need of a Savior. He'll save you this morning. Ask him to come to your heart and come to your life. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Amen. If you're not saved this morning, I want you to come. Christians, if you want to come pray, that's fine too. Amen. But if you're not saved this morning, I want you to walk down this aisle. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to be saved today. I want you to ask Him to come to your heart and come into your life. Praise the Lord.